Okay, so exactly two weeks after Apple dropped the first beta of iOS 26, they are back and have now released iOS 26 beta 2, and this couldn't come fast enough. I am so glad we finally got an update here. If you follow the channel, you know we've talked about some of these uh, changes and tweaks, and we're really looking forward to this update because of how bad beta 1 was. It almost felt like an initial alpha build and actually caused Apple to drop a re-release last Friday to give us a couple of security patches and changes that they felt was needed. So before we actually jump fully into this, I do want to do a temperature check really quick just because it does still feel like the phone is getting pretty warm and you can see right here we are hovering over 100 degrees on every piece of the phone. And again, that top right corner is significantly warmer than the rest of the phone uh, coming in at around 110 degrees Fahrenheit. So yeah, there are still some issues while these phones are updating. Now beyond that, before we jump into anything, let's pull down the control center and you can see it seems again a little tweaked. It seems easier to look at right now. It could just be a placebo effect because of how bad the initial beta was. But let me go ahead and sign in here and let's take a quick look at the build number and everything that goes along with beta 2. So settings, general, and about the second beta looks to be having... Okay, so we have an F build number here. The full build number is 23A5276. F. This is coming from a U build that we received on the 1.5 or the beta 1 re release, whatever you want to call it. So you can see this is substantially better in Apple's view than what we just got a few days ago. That is great to see. Let's see what happens with this build over time because obviously the main question that we always get asked performance and battery life. And battery life on beta 1 was horrible. What's good though is this second beta came in at a size of 1.7 gigabytes for a second beta. That is pretty large, so hopefully that'll mean we will have some updates and significant feature changes. I guess at least on the back end, maybe not so much forward facing changes because Apple did something a little different with this release than they've done in years past. Whereas the first beta doesn't technically have all of the features that were announced at WWDC, this seems to have the majority of them. So that is definitely good to see. And then here we go, as far as the modem firmware, we do have a little change here. We're at 2.03.00, so that has been changed a little bit. And then also, let's go ahead and take a look at the storage here to see how much room iOS and Apple Intelligence is now using. So scrolling to the bottom of iPhone storage, iOS, you can see right here, are taking up a little over 20 gigabytes of storage here, with 13.71 being attributed to iOS, and then Apple Intelligence taking a little over six and a half gigabytes to give you that total here. So we all know obviously how liquid glass looks and how it kind of was a struggle to read through different backgrounds and all that. And you can see, I don't think there's a significant change in the kind of look on it right now, taking a look at some of these notifications, but it is something to be aware of, to keep your eye on as these betas go on, just how much they tint this translucent effect so you can fully see what's going on behind it. Control center looks good, it could just be on this background again. Let's go ahead and actually change that just to see if we see anything different on a different colored background. And it still seems okay, but it is definitely not the easiest to read. There's workarounds for this if you want to change the translucency and turn down this liquid glass effect. You definitely can, but as far as this stands, yeah, you can see exactly where we're at. Now, let's also quickly jump into the developer.apple page and see if we have an update here to look at the release notes. It unfortunately looks like nothing's still updated yet. June 16th is the last one when we got that uh, iOS 18.6 release last week, so not here yet, we will cover that in a future video, but let's just jump around as we typically do and see what's going on here. Let's just go to Tesla. And you can see everything's running pretty smooth. I will say right off the bat, it seems a lot more fluid than it did in the prior beta. So we'll have to see over time just how it is going to look as we keep jumping around in the apps and all of that. One thing you can see in the camera app again, we're still getting that effect, unfortunately, where it spaces all of the viewing and shooting modes out. So you have that slight delay 
getting to your front facing camera if you needed to rotate that around. Maybe it's just me, but I think that is somewhat of an inconvenience if you're looking to take a quick selfie, you're gonna have that delayed camera if you're trying to change it around, unfortunately. Obviously with the initial beta two, this was compatible with the iPhone 11 and newer. You did have changes with the new games app that I will show you right here as well. You can feel it actually lagging just a little bit. This is the new games app. Everything is still reloading from the updates. So I'm assuming that is why it's taking a little bit. Here is our new splash screen for Apple games. It says, see what's new just for you. Play and compete with friends and all of your games in one place. And when you say continue, you can see it'll personalize your experience. And you are at the new home screen for Apple games and you can go to Apple Arcade, play together, library, all of that with that very, very nice looking liquid glass overlay. So I can feel this actually getting a little warmer as we go as it continues fixing everything. But I just wanted to let you know, keep in mind, this might be a little warmer than usual. Now, also, let's talk about this release schedule, because as we anticipated, Apple did release this exactly two weeks after we got the initial beta of 26 beta one at WWDC, we should now be on a weekly release cycle and get beta three on the 30th, which is next Monday. We will continue to get betas throughout July with public betas in July as well. Then August will go through and the final release to the general public will take place in September when we get our new iOS devices that will be coming out. In addition to these changes with the games app and all that, messaging has a couple of changes with these uh, changes to polls, group chats with the typing indicator and being able to screen messages. There is a ton new there that we're not gonna go over again. We covered in the beta one video. And then visual intelligence, that was something, unfortunately, we weren't able to access by taking a screenshot and being able to see these results. Now it is here live in beta two where you can ask it what you're looking at or do an image search as well. So you can click ask and says tapping that logo, ask ChatGTP for more information by capturing and sending what's in view. We'll say continue and it will actually send a request to ChatGPT based off of what you'd like to know about that screenshot. So I'm glad to see that's live. We'll go ahead and just click off of that. And then you can obviously do an image search, which shows you clip. If you tap on that image, it will actually do a Google search for what is on your screen. We'll say continue there and you can see the results will populate right after and it did pretty well. So that is good to see that that has been updated. Again, we didn't have access to that earlier, unfortunately. So I'm glad to see it live now in beta two. And then here we go. It looks like the developer website just updated and we can view the release notes here. I guarantee there's going to be a ton of new issues and resolved ones in this build. And you can see the general resolved issues where it fixed some iPhone 15 and 16 models might show a low battery symbol and be unable to start up after updating. And then it gives you a breakdown on how to fix this. There is new features added to the ad attribution kit. There's a known issue with AirPlay. Alternate app dis uh, distribution has a known issue. The App Store has a new feature that says new accessibility section has been added to the App Store product pages that highlight accessibility features within apps and games, yada yada. App Intense has a known issue. Then Apple Intelligence has a new feature as well here where it says the foundation models framework provides you with direct access to the on-device large language model at the core of Apple Intelligence. There are some known issues as well still as you would assume. And Apple Music has a known issue with auto mix transitions. Maybe Lex Complex are not available in spatial audio. The Apple TV app has some known issues as well. Apps has a known issue on some iPads. Button and symbols might show visualization corruption during app launch. AR Kit has a known issue. Assistant Schemas has known issues. AV Foundation has a resolved issue. Background Assets has another known issue with a workaround. And you can see there's quite a substantial list of those. Books has a resolved issue. CarPlay has a known issue. Cellular data usage has a known issue on dual SIM iPhones with multiple lines enabled. Yeah, so we're not gonna go through all these. You get the idea. There is a ton here listed that we can scroll through for a while. This is actually very known, very good to see what's been changed, what's known uh, that Apple's aware of that they will be, again, releasing updates for in regards to these things. So 
yeah, we're still scrolling. You can see there's a ton here. We'll cut this video at this point. Obviously, no new features that we can see yet in this build, aside from that uh, visual intelligence change for on-screen content. But let me know in the comments down below, what are you most looking forward to in iOS 26 Beta 2? Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace.